Hello, everyone. For the next few minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to start with lesson three of the electric field in section one of this course. To do the analysis of the electric field, all the properties that govern it and to know how to calculate it, what we are going to do is start by analyzing discrete systems of charge. We will continue with the continuous systems and then we will do some problems related to these two types of systems. Starting with the analysis when we are considering discrete systems of charge, we have to keep in mind that the first thing we are going to know is the definition of the electric field. We are also going to introduce a new definition, what we know as the electric field lines. And finally, we will see the algebraic expressions to work with the calculation of the electric field when we have discrete systems of charges. To begin with, we have to take into account that when I have a charge, immediately what is going to happen is that the properties of the space surrounding it are modified. How does this change manifest itself in the space surrounding it? Well, because when I place test charges near the first charge, test charges that we are going to consider positive, that test charge experiences interactions. In this case, if we have, for example, this positive charge and I analyze the interactions by placing a test charge at point P, what I am going to experience is that there is an interaction according to this green vector that gives me an account of the electric field that is being established in that region of space. If, on the other hand, what I do is the analysis for negative charges by placing the test charge at point P, the type of interaction that it experiences is an attractive interaction, as in this case here. How are we going to calculate the electric field? Well, we define the electric field as the force experienced by a positive test charge at the point of study. It's going to be a vector because it's going to be the quotient of the vector magnitude electric force interaction divided by the scalar magnitude charge. Its units in the international system. Well, it is going to be Newton's units divided by coulombs. And if I take into account, as we studied in the previous lesson, how the interaction is expressed, the vector of the electric force interaction, and that I have to divide it by the charge with which we are going to work, the expression that I have left to calculate the electric field due only to a charge is this one that we have here. It is going to depend on the constant K, which in turn depends on another constant, the dielectric constant, as we saw earlier. It depends on the charge that we have placed in space, on the distance squared between the charge and the point of study, and of the unit vector that marks that position vector from the study point to the charge. We have said that the electric field is due to the presence of charges in space, but apart from this context with a purely electrostatic mentality, we must take into account that the electric field is present in many phenomena that we encounter on a daily level. It is present, therefore, in the current cables, in the electromagnetic waves, in the interactions that exist between the electrons, uh, and the nuclei of atoms in a variety of contexts. And in this table, we have a little bit summarized the orders of magnitude that we are going to find for the intensity of this electric field in these different configurations. We have from the domestic cables that we can find electric field strengths of the order of 10 to the minus 2 newtons per coulombs, and we are increasing in radio waves in the atmosphere, in sunlight, under a storm cloud, where we are already of the order of 10 to 4 newtons per coulombs in intensity in the X-ray tubes. And finally, we have a very, very large intensity in what would be the surface of the uranium nucleus, of the uranium element, 2 times 10 to 21 newtons per coulombs. When analyzing what are these interactions that undergo the test charges in the vicinity of charged particles, we will take advantage of the concept of electric field lines. The electric field lines are imaginary lines and will represent the trajectories that would follow those test charges located near the charge that is causing the electric field. In this representation, we see which would be the sense of those lines of the electric field. They would be tangent to the electric field vector at each point where it is defined. For a positive electric charge, as the interaction that the positive test charge is going to feel is going to be one of repulsion, we have that the electric field lines are going to have this radial structure and leaving the charged particle. Here we see a representation of a real case of positive charges and how these iron filings line up according to those field lines. If what we have is a positive charge and a negative charge, then on the negative charge the field lines would go to it, since they would attract that positive charge and go from the positive charge to the negative charge. Here we have two more configurations so that we can see these properties of the field lines 
and a little bit of the structure that is going to be formed in the area of space where the electric field is defined. If we have a positive charge of greater value than a negative charge, we see how these field lines are forming and acquiring that geometry for two positive charges. Here we have that intermediate field that marks the repulsion and that is clearly seen in this real image. What would be a little bit a summary of all the properties that we are going to find for the field lines? Well, these field lines are going to be tangent to the electric field vector. They are always going to come out of the positive charges or from infinity and will end at infinity or at the negative charges as we can clearly see in this image, for example. The number of field lines that will come out of a positive charge or enter the negative charge will be proportional to that charge. Its density is another way of saying that its density will be proportional to the intensity of the electric field at that point. These lines of space, sorry, these field lines cannot intersect at the same point in space because that would mean that there would be two fields defined by the same point and that cannot be. The field lines will only intersect where the charges that define the electric field are. And at great distances from a system of charges, these lines will be equally spaced and will have a view at great distances as if they were point charges. This representation is a little bit radial around the charges. If we want to see the algebraic expressions to make the calculations of the different electric fields that are going to be configured, we have to take into account, as we have seen before, that for the case of a single charged particle that is performing the interaction in the space of its environment, the expression with which we are going to work for the electric field is the one we have seen before of the charge, the constant divided by the distance squared. But in the case that in space we have different a distribution of charges, for example, three only, as we have put here, but we could have any kind of discrete system, finite, yes. Here we have a positive charge Q sub 1, negative Q sub 2, positive Q sub 3. Well, the field that these three charges are going to generate at a given point P, we are going to do it by applying the principle of superposition, as you saw when you studied the electric forces. We are going to calculate the field generated by each one of them, and we are going to add it vectorially, of course, at the point of study. I am left at the end with this algebraic representation that developed for this particular example. I would be left with this representation. Summarizing, therefore, everything important that we have seen during these minutes. We have to take into account what is going to be the algebraic expression that I am going to use for a single charge, how R and R define the field lines that mark the type of change in the properties of the field surrounding the charged particles in space, and that if I have different a discrete system of charged particles, I am going to apply the superposition principle. Thank you very much.